Today's episode is brought to you by Privacy. Head on over to privacy.com slash rogue, sign up, and then you get $5 to spend on anything you want. It's like real money, because it is real money. I don't know why I said it's like real money. It's real money. Money. <laughs> So a modern rogue should definitely be hip to methods of like manipulation or, or of fooling himself above all things. Oh yeah, that I actually look good in those pants. Is that I, what we're getting that's at? That's not exactly, okay. Like what I mean is a lot of us have cognitive biases and we shouldn't fall for them. And that's why we have from the Skeptoid Podcast, Brian Dunning here. Hey, how you doing guys? Dude, all right, all right, walk us through all of the pitfalls that all humans have, but very few of us bother to acknowledge. That's a huge issue because the reason we have things like urban legends and the things that I talk about on the show is because people make all kinds of cognitive errors. Uh, we're susceptible to memory problems. We're susceptible to perceptual errors, preconceived notions. I mean, there's all kinds of things that screw us up when we try and understand the world around us. Are you gonna tell me Slender Man's not real? Is that what this is about? Because hard out. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. Right. And to be clear, none of this makes us bad people. It just makes us human. It's, it's, the, it's the wetware that we were born with that causes us to fill in the gaps with things that are uh, oftentimes supernatural. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And it's important to understand that we're all susceptible to all of these things. We all make errors in what we see, what we, how we interpret what we see. And that's why we have things like smart people believing that Wi-Fi is hurting them, or smart people believing that there's a ghost in their room, or that there's aliens among us. And to be fair, like I get really hurt emotionally when my Wi-Fi doesn't work very well. Is that what we're talking about? That's exactly what we mean, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Knew it. Nailed yeah. it. <laughs> I'm in correspondence with someone who is a royalty from Nigeria. Now, are you saying <laughs> that, that, that I, I'm, I'm pretty it's airtight? He what? happens to have a medical condition called being dead, and he would like to get me a lot of money. So that is actually exactly what we're talking about, because the same kinds of things that lead some people to fall into that particular trap is the same broken thought processes that lead us to interpret things as ghosts or psychics or things like that, or to believe in conspiracy theories. So, so give us an example. Where do we start? Okay. Now I want you to keep your eyes focused that direction. Keep okay. looking that direction. Now, how much time have you guys spent in this room? Oh, I turn it. a lot. Okay. <laughs> sure. So I'm Sorry. gonna ask you yes. a question while you're looking that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ask you a question about the wall that's behind you. There are some sound absorbing panels, yeah. some baffles, right? Yeah, yeah. Gray rectangular things. Yep, yep. Including ones that may be touching the corner. How many are on that back wall? I, okay. This Including is, the ones maybe touching the couch. Kind yes. of not fair because we definitely did an episode where we ostensibly installed them. I However, was outside. I didn't yeah, know. we definitely went outside and smoked cigars. Can't you just call up a mental photograph of the many times you've looked at that wall? No, no, okay. I can only you're, remember the experiences you're right. of having constructed that. What our brains are doing is they're storing an abstraction. They're storing the idea of a wall with baffles on it. It doesn't matter in our normal daily lives how many there are, but we just generally need to know that there are baffles on the wall, so our brain stores kind of an inefficient shorthand version of that. Here's another thing that you've both seen tens of thousands of, and neither of you has any idea what it looks like. Would you turn your pads over, please, gentlemen? Uh-oh. Turn it sideways, the circles are next to each other. What I want you each to do is draw the rest of the bicycle. Oh, oh bicycle! Sorry. <laughs> okay, all right, so I know there are spokes, and, and I realize suddenly that what I'm really doing is not drawing from memory, I am deducing what I assume things to be. Bicycle? Bicycle. Okay. I know there's a seat, so let you me know, draw a seat. You should be able to do this in probably no more than, you know, five, six, seven basic lines. I know there's... The basic shape of the frame and all of that. I know there are handles, and I assume there's something that goes from the handles down to here. <laughs> I think there's a bar that goes this to here. This is comedy gold, by the way. <laughs> I think there's... <laughs> This is a terrible bicycle. That's a there's, seat. That's a, a seat. There's a there's <laughs> seat. I'm I'm labeling stuff um, just in case. I'm just gonna draw a triangle. Okay, that's some. That's, that's a it. Bike, right? That's, that's a bike. Okay. I drew a bike. A, I, wait, wait. Uh, a, oh, there's, uh, there's definitely. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the wrong direction. I think the chain goes the other way. There's chains around there's that. There's chains. 
Oh, uh, wait, there's not. There's not put chains on both wheels. I don't think that works. Would, would you guys like to show us your, your completed bicycle? Hold drawings? on, I gotta draw. That's, that's my, my stick man who's very happy. I don't. <laughs> Here, the, the more the stick man you draw, the more it obscures of your I just bicycle. Realized, I just realized there's nothing linking the one wheel to the other. <laughs> it's just, you only have a chain doing one wheel to the other. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think, it'll, 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 it'll get you there. I like that you wrote seat with two E's. Yeah, I wanted, no, that's an A, there's an A there, but I just wanted to make sure that there's no, because this is maybe a cloud or some sort of amoeba. What? Okay, let's reveal the truth. Yeah. What is a bicycle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>it doesn't matter what the frame looks like. We just don't need to understand that it works, that it's, it's a It's bike. a matter of us holding on to the elements of a bicycle. There's a handle, there's pedals, there's wheels, that we know there's a chain. We don't really concern ourselves with the what goes yeah. where and how. Be, and it's, the reason is because it just simply doesn't matter. To most people's daily lives, that's the way our brains evolved, the reason our brains evolved the way that they did. Enough to give us useful information that we need, that we're gonna use, without wasting time on the stuff, the details that we don't need. So what you're saying is we passed. You passed you pass with flying colors, dude. These are, these are amazing bikes. I think we gotta get these off to the patent office right away. <laughs> you yeah. nailed it. I wanna show you guys another example of how our brains misuse the things that we remember. And again, this is something that works to our advantage even though it may seem like our brains are making a mistake. What I'm gonna do is read a list of words, okay? Candy, sour, sugar, bitter, good, taste, nice, honey, soda, chocolate, heart, tooth, cake, eat, and pie. Now I'm gonna read you three more words, and on each of these three words, I want you guys to hold up a hand if that word is in the list I just read. Mm -hmm. And if it was not in the list, don't raise your hand, and it's okay to raise it halfway if you're not sure. Okay. Okay, word number one, taste. Word number two, point. Word number three, sweet. Okay. The only reason I did not raise my hand is because for 10 years, this is one of my go-to examples in my skeptic lecture. <laughs> what? You just had a false memory, my oh, friend. Raise your hand if you didn't have a lecture. <laughs> no, this was up until yeah. the moment that I had encountered this study, I used to believe that, okay, maybe I don't remember everything, but the things I do remember definitely were true, right? And it turns out that study after study shows that, that, that false memories get massaged over time. In this case, all of the things he talked about were, were stuff associated around sweet, but not including sweet. And there was a yeah. study that did multiple versions of these. It ended so many arguments, because I used to like, no, 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 it happened this way. No, 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 it happened this way. But once you understand that the mind has an incredible capacity to create memories that do not exist. This is called an associative memory error. You're associating all these words that we just read with the concept of sweetness and good taste. So that's why the first test word that I read was taste, and that was on the list. The second one, point, had nothing to do with any of these words. So it was really easy for you guys to mm -hmm. both not raise your hands. And then sweet, you actually did it right. You got it wrong because sweet wasn't in the list, but your brain was doing the right thing. Mm. It was storing the concept of all these words because again, it's just not important to know the detail list of the words. Which so is, you cheated and you got it right. What? Okay, I cheated <laughs> by time traveling 15 years ago and learning about this, all right. I'm gonna give you guys a list of small round things and you're gonna tell me which one most closely matches, which one when held out at arm's length matches the size of the full moon in the sky, okay? For example, the first word on the list is a BB, like a BB pellet. If you held a BB pellet out here- At arm's length. Would that be bigger or smaller than the full moon? Obviously, I think we'll all agree, and I'll just spoil it for you, a BB held out at arm's length is smaller than the full moon. Okay, okay. good. But I'm gonna go through a list of Call progressively it. larger items, and you guys are gonna decide which one matches the full moon, okay? okay. So, starting with the BB, the next one is a P, and okay. then a dime, 
then a quarter, a golf ball, a baseball, a softball, and then a frisbee. A frisbee would be gigantic. That would be straight out of a James Cameron film. <laughs> to have I'll, the I'll give you be... that one too. Frisbee like... is larger, but <laughs> yeah. somewhere in there is the size of the full moon. So somewhere between a BB and a Frisbee. By the way, there's a temptation right now. Everybody at home is going to be all like, oh, I bet it's a surprise. Let me do whatever is one thing above a BB. Like, like, no, 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 like genuinely to the best of your ability, yeah. estimate how big the moon looks. Okay. Out, of, out of your because yeah. I'm in scam nation mode right I know. now. No, 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 no. And I'm thinking. <laughs> let, let's well, get this is a trick. No Honestly, trick. I got okay. it. Who's ready to reveal, Brian? When our daughter was getting born, I made it a job to learn the night sky, and I I seem to remember that the moon is roughly the size of your thumbnail at, at arm's length. Hmm. Uh, so originally I wrote quarter because that's what my heart says the answer is. But if I were to if I were to really use that knowledge, I would say dime. Okay, what have you got? Well, I uh, Brian wrote that because he copied it off of- <laughs> God damn it, me? God damn it. The dime, okay. Yeah. Now everyone can try this at home. Go out next time there's a full moon and hold a dime up. You'll see that it is bigger than the full moon. Shut the up! The correct answer is a P. Shut up! <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Oh, yeah, I, I thought I was softballing this thing, and I thought I was being polite by like, well, I'll at least write the word quarter and then reveal the truth. Try Damn. it out. I'm going to list two simple everyday items, and you're going to tell me which one is big or small or whatever it is that I ask, okay? Now, if I were to say, which is taller, a house or a building, now, you know, there are some houses that are taller than some buildings. So just give me your off the cuff answer. Generally a building is taller than a house, okay? okay sure. So there's no right or wrong answers. We mm -hmm. just wanna hear your perceptions of these common answers. Okay. And I'm gonna answer in this order. I'm gonna have you answer first, then you. Okay. Which is heavier, a school bus or a locomotive? Oh, a school bus, for sure. Locomotive. Which is physically larger, a novel or an encyclopedia? A novel. Encyclopedia. Which is louder, a gunshot or a basketball bounce? A gun, no. A basketball bounce. Gunshot. Which has more parts, a Lego set or a Rubik's Cube? A Rubik's Cube. Lego set. I mean, yeah. Which goes higher, a kite or a weather balloon? A kite, a weather balloon. Which is faster, a race car or a shooting star? A race car. A shooting star. Which looks brighter, a star or the full moon? <laughs> a star, duh. The full moon. Which one is smaller, a silver dollar or a credit card? Credit card. A silver dollar. What? Okay, yeah, silver dollar. Okay, I'm gonna end, end your torment right now. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Obviously, as you can surmise, I gave him instructions before he started. <laughs> yeah, I thought to. Oh, uh, here's another lecture that Brian gave. <laughs> no, so. Obviously, that's the case. We were putting pressure on you. Yeah. And you, the pre I can see it in your face even now. Yeah. And I knew, I was like, you're just picking the wrong ones on purpose. And I thought, he's messing with me. And I, and I, I was in a race to figure it out and I couldn't do it. What's going on? Now, when we do this with a live audience, I've usually got about five people. And the person, the only person who hasn't been given that special instruction is like person number four. So they hear a bunch of people give the wrong answer then they give their right answer, and then more people after them give the wrong <laughs> answer. And almost nobody lasts until the end. If this happens to you all day, every day, very soon you would just say, I'm not gonna deal with the stress and you're just gonna go along with what everyone else says. If I read the situation correctly, there was like confusion at first, and then there was some moment that you made the decision this is Brian, we're doing a modern rogue shoot. <laughs> I am definitely being messed with and you no longer felt the need to go with the program. I didn't think of it in those exact terms, but it was definitely that. Cause I thought, at first I thought, Brian knows something I don't know. 
I've got to figure this out. What's, what am I, what am I missing? What am I missing? Which is exactly what people yeah. have in that situation. They're like, well, yeah. these five other people must obviously know something I don't about mm -hmm. which line is longer. Exactly. And, and more importantly, we just want to conform. It's easier to conform with others than to be the outcast, especially about something that doesn't matter, like mm -hmm. these stupid questions. Well, is it because you're afraid that you're wrong or is it because you don't want to rock the boat. It's not really a conscious choice in most cases either way. It's simply our native de to desire to conform. In fact, this test is named after the professor that developed it. It's called the Ash Conformity Test. So let me ask you, was there a point where you considered breaking? No, because I knew that this was an exercise. Right, okay. right. And so, no, because I know Brian Brushwood and <laughs> screw that guy, well, am I, I right? I didn't expect, I, I expected that I was wrong. Even when it wrapped up, I thought, okay, there's one key reason why I must be wrong about all of these, and they're gonna tell me, and I'm gonna feel like an idiot, but I'm gonna make them tell me what it is before I cave. I think it's interesting that you suspected you must be wrong about this, because nobody wants to be wrong, and it's so much easier to simply mm -hmm. conform than to yeah. go forth knowingly being wrong about something. Nobody wants to do that. These are all very powerful examples of the way our brain works, tricks us into making mm -hmm bad decisions and, and accepting yeah. wrong information mm -hmm. all day, every day. And basically these exercises and many more like them that I give in my live show, Outsmart Your Brain, sign up today <laughs> at briandunning.com. Smooth, that was smooth. <laughs> it's good, it's good. It's good, it's good. These tests and many more, they, they explain the basic reasons why smart people believe weird things. And we all know how much of that there is going around these days. I love all of these examples. I love that moment of realizing that we're all made of flawed wetware, that the, we see the world and do our best to construct a reality around it. And sometimes when there's gaps, we fill them with supernatural whatevers. And uh, to be honest, like some of these were elements that were in my skeptical lecture back in the day. But nowadays, there are, how many episodes do you have of Skeptoid.com. I've done 700 episodes of the Skeptoid podcast. Oh, Each wow. one of these Each little one. nuggets yeah. exactly like this, they're gonna blow your mind. Every episode begins with a very good telling of the legend that is about to be deconstructed. And it's only after you get a sense of the goosebumps up and down your arm, you're like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. I wanna hear about it. Then it's like, well, let's break it down. Now let's understand the cognitive aspects that go into this. There's such a temptation to be cynical and dismissive. And what I love about Skeptoid is that you get give a fair amount of your bandwidth to telling the best version of the stories that you're about to deconstruct. Where does that come from? You know, it comes from so many of us who work in science communication grew up as fans of the paranormal and science fiction and all of these things, and a love of all of these stories. I read all of these books and I believed all of these stories when I was a kid. And when I grew up and got into science communication, I wanted to solve them. And I didn't want to know, you know, just what was the secret of did aliens build the pyramids or the Amityville horror or any of these stories. I wanted to know why people believed the untrue version of them. And, and what I've found is that's often just as interesting as the, as the mystery itself. I think Skeptoid.com is the fairest, best skeptical encyclopedia back catalog of what everybody should know about all the legends that we grew up with. And I cannot thank you enough for joining us. This is I freaking amazing, Brian. It. This is awesome. It is fun, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry, sorry. I think the worst of all cards is that default bank debit card that they send you. That thing is like walking liability. It's actual freaking access to your actual bank account where a thief could just say, yum, 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 yum. That's what they say when they take your money. They go, I'm the robber, robber, robber. That's what it felt like because <laughs> it happened to me like two weeks ago. No way. For Absolutely. Real? Yeah. Wait, yo, 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 why are you still, why do you even have your debit card? I know, I know you're not supposed to use it. Uh, security expert Frank Abagnale said, do not use your debit card. It is just a gateway to your finances. Use a credit card, but even and that makes me feel exposed. So I just uh, try to negotiate some sort of bartering system when I buy things on the internet and it has <laughs> not worked out at all. Emailing like, I will send you three geese for this doubloon. The important thing is you don't want to expose your real numbers online. So what you want to do is generate burner cards, yes. which you could do through privacy.com slash rogue. Basically you set it up with your account, the totally free version, you could generate 12 burner cards per month.
month. That's an awful lot. If you're a crazy power user, let's say you have a team or something, or let's say you want rewards, they have paid plans, but the free version, 12 burner cards a month. And the best part is, unlike credit card companies that are happy to sell everybody who wants to know, oh, do you want to know what Brian Brushwood paid in his bar tab over the last month? Well, just write me a check and let's make that available to you. Screw you, credit cards. How about that? Yeah, privacy does not do that. They keep all of your information. And there's so many other benefits to it. Like if you want to cap out your spending, let's say uh, you're buying a lot of uh, Jeep Jops. I know you buy a lot tacos. of Jeep Jops. Tacos, we're talking about tacos. I don't buy a lot of tacos online because they're kind of <laughs> bad when they get to your house when you order them. I've tried. But the important part is that you can set the limit of every single burner card that you create with just a simple click of the button at privacy.com slash rogue. Oh, we didn't even talk about it. so many of the people watching right now are building their online identity. Like they have YouTube channels, they're telling stories in public. Every time there's a data breach, people can look up your name, but privacy doesn't share any of that. Yeah, protect yourself and keep those uh, online spending habits uh, at a limit uh, that maybe your significant other is. I, I'm you not- I feel like you're just trying to make this all about the taco. It's a little, really it's a little specific. Hey, treat your taco problem period, new sentence. Also protect your online privacy at privacy.com slash rogue. You get $5. Man, too. I'm hungry for a taco now. I'm gonna get a taco. That sounds good. I've already had like three today, so. <laughs>